tonight, the grand final replay. Brisbane versus the Pies. A state of origin square off as the Maroons call the Blues coach a publicity seeker. And it's tight at the top as the Premier League heavyweights slug it out. Welcome to Sports Tonight, and before we get started, it's time to say a few goodbyes. Domestically, it's goodbye to one of Australian basketball's great characters. Shane Heal is courting different challenges. Whether I look to play part-time in the future, I, I, I really don't know. Internationally, goodbye again to the best in the world. Michael Jordan is hanging up on hoops for good. Plus, we'll have the blowout at Bells and borders on edge in Spain. Well, first to the AFL in Brisbane have relegated Collingwood to second place again. Downing the Pies by 14 points in the grand final rematch of the Gabba. But after a massive build-up, the game did not disappoint. After a mud-slinging build-up, the Collingwood cheer squad backed down in the face of a $20,000 AFL fine. But in protest, ripping the letters from the controversial banner President Eddie Maguire had written. And while the Magpies were the first to score a major, in this physical game full of superstar matchups and jangling medals, the Lions struck back after pressure, Akamanis and Lynch combined to record their first goal. He likes it, and the Lions have their first of the night. It was white hot in the clinches, a strong leading Chris Tarrant at the difference early on. The Pies by 11 points at the first change. Lions debutant Jared Brennan, cool, calm and collected beyond his years, slotting his first AFL goal from a difficult angle, while at the other end, Rocker kept the Pies in front. Wonderful goal! The powerhouse old Lions teaching the younger Magpies all about pride and physical presence, but it was the Woodsman who went into the long break still seven points up, despite a late Lions charge. Pass open goal, and he pops a throw! The tension continued to mount and after an ordinary first half, Justin Lepich went forward in the third term and put the Lions back in the hunt. But in the seesawing encounter, the Collingwood skipper put a stop to Brisbane's run, finding his first goal of the night. And the Pies go in front by two. Enter Chris Johnson with a soaring mark. This is the Lions defender already looking to move the ball on as he hit the ground. The Premiers with the last four goals of the third quarter to go into the break 20 points up. There's another one. First gamer Jared Brennan continued to impress at both ends of the ground, curbing the dangerous Tarrant. The Lions had plenty of goal kickers, Notting featuring in the all-star lineup with the shortest goal of the night. This time Notting gets his third goal. The Magpies runners up again, the Lions just too strong. The Magpies were inaccurate early and it cost them, although a couple of late goals put some honour onto the scoreboard. Nine separate goal kickers for the Lions on top of the ladder after backing up their words with deeds. I mean, they haven't kicked gigantic scores against us the last few times we've played them, but the big forwards have been pretty good. Town and Rock have seen a bit of ones, but yeah, most of the time we've been able to stop their small forwards from scoring a great deal, so therefore they, you know, the end score is reasonable. I've been pretty good in terms of luck. Playing with a great team, I suppose. It's a good experience. We got a lot to learn. I, that, that was one of the most disappointing games that I've been involved in for, for a number of, uh, I say years, probably years. The future of Essendon midfielder Adam Ramanaskis is still unknown after surgery today removed a lump from his upper body. He's one of three players out of the Bombers squad for their game with the Bulldogs. The Bombers will feel a pinch on Saturday night. Premiership stars Masiti, Wellman and Ramanaskis all out injured. Dustin Fletcher is in doubt and Barnard suspended. First game at Darren Walsh amongst Kevin Sheedy's his inexperienced inclusions. Peter Road has been true to his word, dropping two players after last week's shocker. Wade Skipper to make his debut. Peter Schwab dropped a couple of his own and says they won't be on their own unless there's a dramatic form reversal against the Swans. If you don't play well, that there's someone who can replace you. And that's what pressure you need on selection. Some players don't always get that pressure because of other aspects. So some players are going to be under pressure all the time to hold their place in the side because we have got alternatives. Jonathan Hay retains his spot, only just set the challenge of curbing danger man Barry Hall. The Swans welcome back Michael O'Loughlin. The axe has swung down in Geelong as well. Mark Thompson chopping four players as the Cats search for their first win of the year. The Demons Peter Vardy will begin his season three weeks late. Port Adelaide has given up hope skipper Matthew Primus can play. He's out of Sunday's match with the Blues with a jarred knee.
Mick Martin has been named to have his first game in Carlton Colours. And there's another new face at Optus Oval. A day after Don Hanley's departure, Ian Collins has lured City of Melbourne boss Michael Maloof as their new CEO. Uh, we now want to settle down and get on with running the business as it should be run, and uh, we think uh, Michael can do that. Last year's number one draft pick, Brendan Goddard, has been named in the extended Easter Monday squad to meet the Tigers. Captain Aaron Hamill comes back, the Moorabbin clan maintaining there is no rift in the playing group after a training altercation involving Heath Black and Nick Rewalt. It's been blown sort of out of proportion a bit and, and uh, you know, nothing much was said about it afterwards. It was just something that happened at training and, you know, there's no rift between any of the players or anything like that. So it was just, you know, one of those things that happened in a competitive drill. And although he doesn't look a pretty picture, Richo's confident his fractured cheek is right and he's ready to make a comeback on Easter Monday. No more so than usual. Um, no, he's all right. He's, uh, he's still racing himself with the lady, so he's, uh, he's going all right. Relations between the management of Bulldogs halfback Brent Sherwin and the NRL club have taken a turn for the worse tonight. Bulldogs CEO Steve Mortimer furious at Sherwin's manager Mark Rowan for leaking details of the contract negotiations breakdown to the media. In turn tonight, Mark Rowan fired back saying Mortimer should get his facts straight, that he was not the one that leaked the story, that in fact it was Sherwin in answering a question honestly to a journalist earlier in the week is the way that the story got out. Now the Bulldogs of course face a huge task in trying to keep many of their big name players who are coming up contract. Sherwin's offer is said to be nowhere near what he could get on the open market. He is keen to stay at the Bulldogs, but they will now wait till the June 30 deadline to see what he can get on that open market. Now, State of Origin War of Words is underway in earnest. Tonight, Queensland captain Gordon Tallis fired some shots at New South Wales coach Phil Gould, who yesterday announced that he would stay on as New South Wales coach despite some problems with reporters. It's just a publicity stunt for himself to get his head on television. At the Sharks, speculation that all is not well. Senior players Dean Treaser and Nick Graham both dumped for this weekend's game against Newcastle. Talk this week that uh, David Peachy isn't happy. He, of course, has since denied that. And the club yet to get a win. Despite all of that, the club is denying any talk of disharmony. The part about disharmony and, uh, you know, players wanting to leave, we know amongst ourselves is untrue, so... Once you start winning games, then they'll be saying they want to sign for life. So, you know, it turns around pretty quick. Well, Parramatta is the other club that is really under the pump this week. But today they are out spreading a bit of good cheer to some sick kids in Westmead Hospital, signing autographs, handing out some Easter eggs to kids who aren't feeling so good right now. The Eels are involved in the double header on Saturday night, and they know that it won't be easy turning their fortunes around against the West Tigers. The West Tigers aren't going to make it easy for us this week and just give us a win because we haven't had one for a while. I think we're just going to have to get out there and work as hard as we can and, and try and get the two points. Tomorrow night's Good Friday blockbuster is between the Sydney Roosters and the Brisbane side. The running premiers know that the Broncos side are coming off a loss, but they still have plenty of respect for them. Broncos are one of the top teams to beat, so uh, it's going to be a really good clash on Friday. Really looking forward to it. To Super 12 now, and while the Waratahs prepare for tomorrow night's clash against the Brumbies, New South Wales coach Bob Dwyer is looking further ahead. He says New Zealand's dominance of the Super 12 isn't a pointer to the World Cup. The Waratahs might be desperate to break into the Kiwi-dominated top four, but win or lose against the Brumbies, coach Bob Dwyer says the Super 12 isn't a reflection of things to come in the World Cup. If we take last year, for example, South Africa finished uh, way down the bottom, at least the bottom three spots, maybe the bottom four, and yet their test team beat Australia in the, in the Tri-Nations. Dwyer's confident Australia's three Super 12 franchises offer the Wallaby selectors a great deal of depth. I think that what Australia got going for us is that the sum total of our Super 12 teams equates to, much, to a much greater side than any one of the teams, whereas I'm not so sure if that's the truth in New Zealand. Dwyer, however, is braced for a make-or-break match against a focused Brumbies outfit. The pride of the ACT preparing to add another notch to their win record over the Waratahs. There's a lot of rivalry, I suppose, between Australian teams, especially the ACT and New South Wales. There's always just that extra bit just to play for, so, I mean, we're definitely looking forward to it. And also, I suppose, as a selection point of view, there's a lot of blokes that are out there playing for a spot. Stick around, we'll take a break and be back with more of Sports Tonight.
Basketball's buzzer beaters. Shane Hill says it's time to go from the NBL. I'm ruling out a comeback from full-time basketball. Michael Jordan finally farewells the NBA. I know it's not terrible. It's something that I've come to grips with and it's time. And later, the top two shoot out in the Premier League. Is this a great ball in? Oh, what a game! And welcome back. The domestic basketball career of Shane Hill is over, but his international career is not finished just yet. The Hammer retired from NBL, but plans to go on to the Olympics for a fourth time. It was expected to be the will-repeat-the-championship speech. Instead, King supporters were hit with a blonde bombshell. I'm here tonight to tell you that uh, I'm going to retire from full-time basketball. The part owner of the Kings now set to jump into the front office. You know, I feel like I've been a part of the history, but I feel like I can be a big part of the future and um, in a different role. After claiming that seemingly ever-elusive championship for Sydney, Hill now putting an end to one of the NBL's all-time great careers, debuting at age 16. Hill scoring 7,743 career points in 364 matches. In 1997, the Hammer made it to basketball's holy grail, the NBA. But could there be a comeback? I'm ruling out a comeback from full-time basketball. Whether I look to play part-time in the future, I, I, I really don't know. The 32-year-old says his body could play for up to four more years. With the Athens Olympics just one year away, the lure to attend his fourth Olympic Games could well be enough to stave off retirement altogether. Well, that's something that uh, Shane and I haven't discussed, and I'm not Shane. I, I wouldn't turn my back on, on Australia either. If, if that came up, then I'd see how I was feeling and, and go from there. And it's all over two for the game's greatest, and this time Michael Jordan says there'll definitely be no comeback. With the he showed cut, glimpses of Air Jordan against the Philadelphia 76ers, but with the Wizards never really in it, MJ sat down after making his last ever field goal in the third quarter. The crowd demanding he make one more appearance. Five-time MVP winner returning with just two and a half minutes on the clock and drilled a couple of free throws, his final points in the NBA. There's the foul, there's the end of a legendary career. The game stopped for more than two minutes as 20,000 fans said goodbye to one of the greats of basketball. It gave me an outlet and it gave me a chance to experience life all over the world, not just here in the States. You know, it taught me a lot of things about life in terms of respect respect, hard work, determination, achievement, setting goals, you know, a lot of basic things in life. Playoff positions were on the line and the Pacers clash with the Nets, and it showed. He didn't mean to do it, but he got Reggie good. The Pacers clinching third spot in the East with a tough seven-point victory. Jermaine O'Neal for the exclamation point. The LA Lakers needed a win over Golden State to leapfrog Portland in the West. Kobe Bryant's buzzer beater on half time, giving the three time champions the edge. Oh, the three pointer is good to beat the buzzer. Bryant unstoppable with a game high 44 points. The Lakers approaching their best at the right time of year. So the Lakers by six Indiana, Philadelphia, Boston, Dallas, Sacramento, and Milwaukee all head into the playoffs with a win. Portland with a costly loss against the Clippers, Houston, New Orleans, Cleveland, Seattle and Minnesota, all winners on the final day of the regular season. So a look at the playoff matchups in the East, where top seed Detroit will play Orlando, number two seed New Jersey face Milwaukee, the Pacers meet Boston and Philadelphia clash with New Orleans. To the powerful Western Conference, where San Antonio will play Phoenix, title favourite Sacramento play Utah, Portland's final game loss means they meet the Mavs, and you can't discount the Lakers aiming for four straight starting with the Timberwolves. The infamous Easter conditions at Bells Beach in Victoria have struck again with no action on the water today. The weather was fine for the birds, but not for the surfers. Tournament officials forced to abandon today's second heat because of a blowout at Bells. The competitors just want the wind to change. Really frustrating if it was offshore this morning, we'd see some fantastic surf. So. 
a little bit frustrating, but at least the swell's still hanging around. We thought it might be flat by this morning, and there's still a bit of swell there, so if the wind could cooperate, we'd um, should be apples. The action is expected to resume on the water tomorrow with a round two heat fitting six-time world champion Kelly Slater against rookie Danilo Costa. All square as the Gunners and Red Devils go goal for goal in the Premier League. the snowboarders feeling the pain in Spain. English Premier League Championship is delicately poised after an eventful two-all draw between title heavyweights Arsenal and Manchester United. With the championship still wide open, both teams were desperate for the points. A packed stadium at Highbury almost silenced after just 20 minutes when Van Nisselrooy found himself in space. Just minutes later, he made no mistakes. Brilliant! Van Nisselrooy, surely he won't miss again! No way! A change of ends also bringing a change of score. The Gunners getting one back. The ball deflecting off Arsenal striker Thierry Henry. Twelve minutes later, he delighted the crowd with another. And here's the chance to go in the lead, and Henry has taken it. Incredible turnaround at Highbury. The Gunners looking like they may have sealed the match, but their celebrations were quickly cut short when Ryan Giggs made it to all. It's a great ball in. Oh, what a game this is. Game of the season, you bet it is. Plenty of dramas to finish off the game after Sol Campbell fended off the defence. Players divided over what exactly happened. However, the officials had little doubts. The red card meaning Campbell's now likely to miss the FA Cup final, while the draw leaves Manchester United three points clear on top of the Premiership. Thierry Henry now the league's leading scorer, tied with James Beattie on 21 for the season. United remain three points clear of the Gunners, who have one game in hand on their title rivals. Groundbreaking stuff for Tiger Woods, he's taken part in a ceremony marking the start of work on his learning centre in California, the project to benefit disadvantaged youths. The aim of the $25 million Tiger Woods Centre is to build self-esteem and promote academic achievement as well as have an emphasis on sport. It just blows my mind sometimes to be able to think that in this little high school punk kid who used to play out here has a chance to come out and and be able to give back to where where it all started and to the slopes on a mountain in spain they call el dorado the annual free riders extreme championships where competitors defy gravity traversing and jumping over the rocky terrain on the snow-capped peaks avalanche is always a danger for the borders one competitor chose the daunting path through the icy rock trail before completing an outrageous jump onto the snow below much to the delight of those witnessing the skillful and successful manoeuvre. And now to the weekend's odds, and here's Bill Anderson. Formula One punters will know that Michael Schumacher is yet to win a race this season. The question is, can he turn that around? There's the response. Despite a disastrous start to the year, Schumacher's $2.10 to take the chequered flag at this weekend's San Marino Grand Prix and 125 to finish on the podium. Barrichello's 525 to win and 180 to place. Rapenham's five dollars fifty. Coulthard six dollars. You won't have to go past the group on screen to find the winner. Of course, you'll catch all the action here on Network 10. Check your local guides for details. Now to AFL, where the Cats two dollars and five face Melbourne 175. The Demons haven't registered a win in their last eight visits to Geelong. Hawks 160, Sydney 230, Bulldogs 225. Essendon 163, they should bounce back. Footy Park gives the Crows the edge of the short 130V West Coast. Carlton 220 and a huge chance of upsetting an undermanned Port 165. The Blues in fact out tip of the week. For no reason other than Subiaco, Fremantle favoured over the Roos, while we can't separate the unpredictable Saints and Richmond. In Rugby League, the Roosters have been backed as if they're good things at the $1.40 against Brisbane, you won't get 290 the Broncos too often. 
Bulldogs 124, Dragons four dollars. That looks about right. Tides 255, Eels 150. The market says there won't be much between Souths and the Panthers. I'm leaning toward the visitors. Manly 168, Melbourne 215, Sharks 260, Knights 148. The Sharks now out to $29 in premiership betting. And the only interest in the New Zealand Cowboys clash is at the plus or minus 21 and a half for $1.90. If Super 12 forms any guide, New Zealand deserve to be the early 260 favourite to win this year's Rugby World Cup. Australia are 320, England 525, France $7.50, South Africa $10, and then come some real outsiders. Well, I hope you have a safe and a lucky weekend. Happy punting. And welcome back. We'll be showing you a very special play of the day in just a moment. But before then, let's recap tonight's AFL scores. And there it is for you in the grand final rematch. Brisbane have done it again over Collingwood. 14-11-95 to 11-15-81 in front of a crowd of almost 36,000. So Brisbane once again getting the better of Collingwood. Now, an extended play of the day tonight. It's more like the plays of a legend. As we say goodnight, we also say goodbye to Michael Jordan. And thanks for the highlights.